It is exactly one minute past, past the hour of 8 o'clock, the 16th day of October 2022. Welcome to the UBC News Tonight. With me, Wadulo Mark Arnold Mugalu Mohammed on sign language. And without further ado, let's start with this story. For that, President Yuri Kaguta Museveni last evening issued new directives in the districts of Mobende and Kasanda registering high numbers of Ebola patients to reduce the virus from spreading to other parts of the country. Now this was confirmed in his second national address in a row in a period of one week, cautioning the public to be vigilant. These are some of the details. Wakasangi wanaka uka Neku mina mwenda beba food day Osogora kuona Oburade wuno And to prove that So far 20 people Have recovered from The Ebola Mkukira keri ya guanga kuluwa kusaturua wiki eno President M7 ya labu la basu In other news, this Sunday, the Deputy IGP Major General Joffrey Kasigazi has been in Kasanda and Mobende endeavoring to implement the presidential directives on travel ban. Buddha Buddha riders were among others arrested for violating the presidential directive. The manpower was not enough, but Kasigazi says that it will be sorted out with time. starting and manpower is not yet enough. As you might see, we are just broken some few areas because of the little manpower we have. But by the end of today, we shall have enough force to ensure that locate, move end, separate it from Kassanda, separate it from other districts, and uh, support all these directives to the maximum. But all in all, security is not going to work alone. Security will work with the people. People need to know that we are here to fight a disease called the Ebola. So let them help police, help security, help themselves to stop Ebola. But those uh, motorbikes that were impounded last night will work with the district see that we release them back to their owners, but they must back them as their own. In other news, as UNEB exams kick start this Monday, October 17th, candidates are being asked to remain confident and disciplined while undertaking exams. 
Pastor Joseph Ntimira of Global Harvest Church prayed for blessings to the candidates and advised them to embrace God's guidance since he is the giver of wisdom. <laughs> Pastor Joseph Ntemera of Global Harvest Church has advised candidates to put God at the center of the exams as they write their Uganda National Examination papers. I'm Pastor Joseph Ntemera from Global Faith International Ministries. We thank God for the great work he's doing. Today it has been awesome to dedicate the children of um, at our school, Global Harvest Secondary School. We thank God for his work and we believe God is going to do wonderful. We believe that this year we're going to do more better than other years. Because I know where there is God, everything is possible. The director of Global Harvest Foundation, Pastor Egesa Jackson, acknowledged the parents for their great support to their children as they pursue their studies. Yes, my name is Egesa Juma Jackson, director of Global Harvest Secondary School and President Harvest Foundation. Today we have had the best. We are actually writing down in the chronicles of this ministry and Uganda lover that we've prepared our children. We're actually doing the briefing of our candidates for S4 that are slated to start on Monday, their, their exams. We are believing in God. We have done what it takes. We are very grateful to the parents because with the socioeconomic rifts that they have been going through, they have been able to pay up. Our parents have paid. We thank God and we thank them for the effort. And our children have been come. This year is special. We are actually believing God that we shall be able to excel. But for the Bible says that he who trusts himself is a fool. We do not want to trust ourselves, but believe God the last hour. Until day zero, we brought the ministers of God to stand with us in prayer and lift our children to the glory of God. The students thanked their teachers for their support and promised to excel in the 2022 examinations. Uh, my name is Nakabonge Masi, a student at Global Harvest Secondary School, Seguku. I'm a candidate this year. Today I want to thank the Lord that we had our dedication day. Uh, let's say at first I was a bit scared before they prayed for us and briefed us about certain things that we should do during the UNEB. But I thank the Lord that I'm now strong and ready for the exams and I believe that the Lord will do us well. My name is Elinda Giuliana, a candidate in Form 4 at Global Harvest Secondary School. It's located along Entebbe Road in Seguku. Um, today has been our briefing at the same time our dedication as we the candidates of Form 4. I believe we have gained much from it as we have been told on how to take up with the examinations because us generally we have been panicking, we have been so afraid but with this session we have been lifted on high and we feel much more safer and confident. Writing of your papers begins tomorrow October 17th starting with mathematics paper 1. Well, we do wish the candidates all the best in their UCE examinations. Now, the Prime Minister, Robin Anabanja, has also appealed to the public to be extra careful and avoid unnecessary movements to prevent the spread of Ebola. Nabanja was last evening addressing mourners at the barrio of Joseph Katabazi, who was an NRM chairman, Bujaja, in Mpansana, sub-county, Kakumiro district. The Prime Minister Robina Nabanja has asked the public to desist from handshakes, wash their hands regularly, and also report any suspected cases to the health facilities. So, we know Koraki, we can get the Seriza. We can get the we can get the Seriza, 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 we can get the so, mumani longeri yokuweta angira, uta kuata mungaro, uta nunawa na sabuni. By the way, e bora kani wakio funda na na corona. Nabanja appealed to the public to embrace government developmental programs to improve their livelihoods. Parish mota izire, taro parish lemu kaku mi lefuni recent, abu kuma mukakere wa, bakakere wa kulete vi tuwa bakakumi. 
Nabanja challenged the parents and guardians to prioritize the education of their children because it's a sure way of empowering the children. <laughs> Nabanja appealed to the people to properly use the funds being sent by the government through the parish development model to plan well and improve on their livelihoods. Nabanja promised to support the orphans of late Katavazi to continue schooling and also engage in business. Earlier in the day, Nabanja presided over fundraising function for the completion of Nyarushanze Catholic Church in Rukonjiri district and lauded the people of Rukonjiri for supporting the NRM government. <laughs> Nabanja commended the LC1 chairpersons for taking care of the villages by ensuring security of the country. Today at Mperere Catholic Church in Wachiso District, Musinyo Charles Kasibante, who represented the Archbishop of Kampala, expressed concern over the increasing inhuman acts in the country. Nadara eyo eta wakatonda kitiwa. Indira eminya ibira kirobie. Mnabanja appealed to the parishioners to promote and work for peaceful coexistence in the country. And in another development, farmer groups are upbeat about the parish development model aimed at improving household incomes but also improving nutrition in Uganda. Now, UBC TV interacted with a number of them during an exhibition at the sidelines of the World Food Day celebrations at Namulonge. At commemorations to mark World Food Day at the National Crop Resources Research Institute, Namulonge in Wakiso District, different farmer groups and organizations engaged in promoting inclusive, resilient and sustainable agri-food systems showcased their products. Among them was Vamutulo Women's Group from Luero, which is engaged in promoting indigenous crops and adding value to them to increase their incomes. According to the group chairperson, the group which is supported by Sasakawa Africa Association is able to add value to crops to make high nutrient products and earn more money. Value addition yomu total di kila kwe chochori na e, chochori manori mama ogo, no mkola mupai. Chita geza bilina kwa sobolo kubango, sobolo kuyingi za nusulu kumi, omutu wa wawansi. They also promote growing of indigenous high value crops like beans, which are not easily affected by climate change. Tulina kanye buono wafo weda. Kanye buona chochi janjali chiru nye nebo bo chifumbie. Chetu sabanti ya bantubali zeyo kunsigeno nansa ngwaru ansonga. Nsigeno yali e gumirabu lichimu. Nsiga langa ye ya teno kungule vijanjali no sobolo kubifuna. And we are aiming at those specific crops that are nutrient dense. Those crops that are going to help the farmers benefit nutritionally. The technical coordinator for nutrition sensitive agriculture at Sasakawa Africa Association says they have already sensitized and prepared their farmer groups to benefit from the parish development model. We are so grateful that the farmers are the ones to benefit from this parish development model and uh, Sasakawa we are already set because we have groups that uh, th this is like an extension of the models that we have as Sasakawa. Their next focus is now to support farmers in regenerative agriculture which is nutrition sensitive and market oriented. We are also making sure that whatever farmers are producing has a market hence market oriented agriculture as the third pillar which is our focus. We work with the farmers to see the market first before they go into production. Through the parish development model, government is working towards liberating farmers still stuck in subsistence farming and graduate them to commercial agricultural production while emphasizing the issue of food 
animal feed and nutrition security. It's going to be a game changer for improving household income and fighting poverty in this country. And I believe with these technologies I've seen here, the sky is going to be the limit. Last week, government at the office of the Prime Minister disbursed over 80 billion shillings to 3,237 compliant parish development model circles in quarter one of the financial year 2022-2023. Bernard Yiga, UBC News. Now the people of Kasanda and Mubende are again testing the tough times likened to those of the COVID-19 lockdown announced by the head of state as one of those measures to curb the spread of the deadly Ebola virus disease. The Ebola virus disease was first declared in Mubende district on the 20th of last month. Adiana Kuti with more of the story. The Ebola outbreak of Sudan strain was declared in Mubende district on the 20th of September and has spread to four other districts, Chegegwa, Kasanda, Kagadi and Bunyangabu. Now the two districts of Mubende and Kasanda with many cases are under lockdown for 21 days. The development was announced by the head of state in his televised address to the nation on Saturday 15th October 2022. This lockdown brings back the memories of the several lockdown events and hard times that the country experienced two years back during the peak of the COVID-19 pandemic. The purpose of the lockdown in the two districts of Mubende and Kasanda is to contain the spread of the deadly Ebola virus disease that has claimed a sizable number of lives, including health workers. The shape of the head is the one which gives you the the, 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 the style of the hair, if you have got a big head like mine, <laughs> the, the style of the hair is, is different from the one with the small head. Now, because Ugandans don't listen, now, Katibiri Yokoga is at Vidoko, Yokunyo Nyora, Yokoga Irira. I'm now going to develop a throat, a sore throat, because of talking about trying to prevent people not to die. Imagine. No one will never hear. Munange tofa, munange tofa. Enomfunda yoksa tu, never hear. What sort of people are these? So now, movements into and out of Mubende, prohibited. Togezanga, Kufuruma, Okubamu district, Yembende, Oboku Yingira. The president announced 21 directives that include restricted movements in and out of Mubende and Kasanda. There will be curfew in Mubende and Kasanda from 7 p.m. to 6 a.m. Movement of people within their respective districts of Mubende and Kasanda is allowed. Public transport, private transport and border borders are not permitted to move. Only cargo vehicles, vehicles supporting the response to the Ebola outbreak, authorized government vehicles and security vehicles are permitted to move, but will not take people in and out of Mubende and Kasanda. Transit vehicles, public and private, crossing through Mubende and Kasanda, are permitted to move with police clearance and shall not stop to pick or drop people. Cargo trucks with only a driver and one handboy shall be allowed to deliver goods and may carry goods out of the districts but not passengers. All cargo shall be delivered to the districts of Mubende and Kasanda during the day and cargo vehicles should leave by 5 p.m. and the operators should not sleep in the two districts. Of course, the operations will be there because they are implementing the presidential directive. If we have said the curfew starts uh, at, at 7, that is it. I'm just appealing to the community to say that they are here with the directives that are in place. Because all the bars have been closed down, the entertainment, they have been closed down. So people should just adhere 
but this curfew is going to be implemented and we can't change anything and we are doing this for their own good. All seasonal markets are suspended in the two districts. The mines in Mwende and Kasanda will remain open for the people there. Schools in the two districts will remain open and learners should move in school uniform and temperatures of all learners, teachers and non-teaching staff should be monitored daily. Any school absence must be reported immediately to the response teams and investigated. All places of worship, bars and entertainment shall remain closed. All barrios, whether Ebola or not, shall be conducted by safe barrio teams and samples shall be taken from all dead bodies and tested for Ebola. Hand washing should be adhered to and health workers will be transported to their places of work within the two districts and those with private vehicles will be given permission to drive within the respective districts. And lastly, the Ministry of Health shall provide personal protective equipment to all registered health facilities, both private and public, in the two districts. As of 15th October 2022, there are 58 confirmed Ebola cases, 19 deaths and 20 recoveries. Yes, words of the President, please do take this caution seriously. Moving on, government has been called upon to boost national agriculture research organizations with research funding to enable more production and productivity for food security. NARO's Deputy Director General for Research Coordination, Yona Baguma, says that 300 billion shillings is required for more agricultural research. This was during celebrations to mark World Food Day at the National Crop Research Institute, Namulonge, at an event officiated by the Prime Minister, Robina Nabanja. The grounds were filled with various innovations and agricultural research potentials displayed by different agencies at several stalls. One of them was the new innovation for fish feeds, recently embraced by National Fisheries Research Institute. So the black soldier fly is being developed to replace the use of mukene in animal feeds such that mukene can be used mainly for human food. The other is the new banana variety where various products are extracted including ropes at Kawanda Agricultural Research Institute. Starch is got from bananas, we have sanitizer, we also got from bananas, we have got fiber, this fiber is extract is extracted from bananas, banana stems. The arrival of the Prime Minister, Robin Anabanja was just in time to appreciate some of the innovations. The adoption of the sweet potato and cassava flour as an alternative to wheat for baking various products was just enough to impress the Prime Minister. Orange sweet potato is grown in many parts of Uganda. Now we are using it for baking all of these, all of these bread, cakes, Mandas. So it is very important that farmers get seed from uh, qualified or, or certified farmers so that they can get good yields. These are some of the innovations that National Agricultural Research Organization, NARO, has taken up over the years. We've been able to release a total of 24 different beans varieties. We have been able to release a total of nine different rice varieties, a total of nine different cassava varieties, and all these have permeated the industry. Iona Baguma, who called for more research funding from government, was supported by Minister for Agriculture, Frank Tumwebazi. The optimal level of funding to make us operate better is 300 billion. But over the years, we have never ever operated below the low level, which is 150 billion. I am appealing to you to support NARO 
with more, more money, money to invest, invest in, in research, research and, and produce their, their research and avail it to, to the market. market. Whereas earlier on impressed, Prime Minister was concerned that some parts of the country suffered from food insecurity despite farming potentials. To me, this is an embarrassment for this country that prides itself as gifted by nature. And as a country, we have very good fertile soils and abundant water and good weather. The food insecurity in some parts of this country should make us pause and ask ourselves, what are we not doing right? In agreement with UN agencies, Nabanja pledged more government support towards agriculture for both subsistence and commercial production. We are calling on the change makers in the food and agriculture space to work hand in hand to build a resilient, better, and more sustainable world where no one is left behind. If we are to leave no one behind, we must also leave no stone unturned in our efforts to reach zero hunger here in Uganda. The NRM government continues to prioritize agriculture as one of the key sectors to drive Uganda's economy in terms of employment, food and nutrition security, and wealth creation. The 43rd World Food Day of 2022 was celebrated under the theme leaving no one behind. Henry Okrut, UBC. Furthermore, the Kampala District Patriotism Regional Coordinator in Schools, Irene Semosu, says that this program has contributed to preventing learners from involving in bad practices. The program is also aimed at mobilizing the general public and learners to engage in practices of loving the country that is patriotism, including environmental protection, involving in community work, fighting corruption, avoiding demonstration in schools, among others. In 2006, government rolled out the patriotism program aimed at mobilizing school proprietors into establishing patriotism clubs to boost learners' interests in appreciating their country. Kampala District Patriotism Regional Coordinator Irene Semusu wants stakeholders to continue forming patriotism clubs for the good of their schools. The patriotism initiative is not political. The parents benefit when they get disciplined children. When we are in school, if you interact from all these students, they are from families which are new, which are FDC, which are DIP, which are NRM, the parents are benefiting. Parents have come out to tell us that the children are now more disciplined, that they work at home willingly. That is all patriotism. This was during a National Patriotism Corps Symposium under the theme Patriotism for Social Economic Transformation held at Old Kampala Secondary School. Over 20 schools from Kampala region participated in the Patriotism Symposium held at Old Kampala Secondary School that culminated in patriotism music, dance and drama. The Patriotism School Coordinator in Nakawa, Hajat Mastula Nambajwe, and the Deputy Patriotism Coordinator, Kampala Central, Hakim Seviri, explained the importance of patriotism in schools. Once the children are converted and they realize the importance of patriotism, the, ch the parents will just follow. The problem is the, ch uh, the, the, the parents we are not inculcating the necessary knowledge into their children. And the children are now getting it from school. Yeah. For instance, when you plant a tree, it is not helpful, it is not necessarily helpful to the person who has planted it there and then. But it will be very beneficial to the future. So many politicians were diluting patriotism in Uganda that it is an association put forward by YCAP7 
to solicit funds. But today, big schools have pioneered this, this arrangement. Chibuli SS, St. Peter's in Zambia, Narusosa Girls, Kololo High School, Chitante Hill. All those big schools have been here. Sudat Kaye, Fred Kasibante, UBC News. As UCE candidates prepare for their examinations tomorrow, we shall be hosting a uh, dig dig dignitary from the National Examinations Board in studio here to enlighten us how well they're preparing for the exams. Stay tuned. Let's take a short commercial break. We'll be back after these messages. MDN joins the people of Keralur to celebrate the 12th coronation anniversary of the King of Keralur, His Royal Majesty Ubim Philip Rauni III in October. At MTN, we believe that we only succeed if the communities in which we operate succeed. And so, we're happy to join the people and well wishes of the people of Keralur in promoting social cultural programs of the Ubim. Walego Mugisa ni Ubimu ku Keralur. The Ministry of Health informs the public that there are confirmed cases of Ebola in Uganda. We, however, urge the public not to panic as the situation is being managed. The Ministry of Health further reminds the public to be on the lookout for any persons who may show signs and symptoms of Ebola. These include high body temperature, abdominal pains, diarrhea, vomiting, bleeding from the body openings such as the nose, eyes, and mouth. Please inform the the nearest health worker immediately if you see anyone with these signs and symptoms. To prevent Ebola from spreading further, please take the following preventive measures. Regular washing of hands with water and soap. Avoid handshaking and hugging. Avoiding any contact with any suspected Ebola patients. Any person who dies suddenly should not be buried but reported to the nearest health worker or LC1 immediately. For further information, please call the Ministry of Health toll-free number on 0800 000066 or send a free SMS to your report on 8500. This message is from the Ministry of Health with support from UNICEF and World Health Organization. Get connected today with the My Airtel 4G smartphone, the most affordable smartphone in Uganda. You get to enjoy free 1GB for one whole year. My Airtel 4G smartphone, your best value for money. Visit the nearest Airtel outlet today and get one at only 250,000 Uganda shillings. Airtel, the smartphone network. Our wetlands are being lost at a very alarming rate. Wetlands have become the most threatened ecosystem, three times faster than the forest. With 35% loss globally since 1970, a quarter of wetland-dependent species are near extinction. This is a very serious loss to our economy and natural resource-based country. The government of Uganda is determined to reverse this trend. Therefore, my ministry calls upon fellow Ugandans to contribute to the conservation and sustainable use of the limited resources. Ugandans stop cultivating, putting up buildings, and dumping in the wetlands. This message is brought to you by the Ministry of Water and Environment, Ministry of Agriculture, Animal Industry and Fisheries, Uganda National Meteorological Authority, with support from Government of Uganda, Green Climate Fund, and the United Nations Development Program. Meet Professor Petero. He knows something every hustler in UG is gonna love. Oh, see. You see, I was just trying to uh, get the document to register for air telemanage. Yeah. You don't need the documents. You just said a register. Yes, become a safer and more efficient 
and scotch free business today. Easy. No mixing your business money with your Kameza money. No, that's efficient. Airtel money. Instant, secure, borderless. Your name papers begins to. Now, tomorrow, the 17th of October, 2022, Form 4 candidates are going to be sitting their exams. They will be starting to sit with the exams, and I think they'll be starting off with math, paper one, and paper two, and the likes. However, without preempting this discussion, joining me in studio today is Jennifer Kalule Nsamba, the principal PRO of Uganda National Examinations Board. You're very welcome, madam. Thank you, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Good evening, dear viewers. I think this is the second time I'm hosting you it's a uh, pleasure. into these it's studios. A pleasure. And it's always a pleasure. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, madam Jennifer, just um, to start this conversation, mm -hmm. how well is the board prepared f this time around to facilitate the UCE examinations this year? Okay, thank you so much. And uh, well, as a board, we are prepared for the conduct of the 2022 UCE examinations. We've been preparing for this for a long time. And uh, we want to thank the Lord for the number of candidates. We want to thank God, first of all, for the candidates. We have a total of uh, nearly 350,000 candidates. That's uh, specifically 349, 445 candidates, UCE candidates, who have mm. registered. And we are grateful to all the parents who gave us these candidates, the teachers who have been teaching them. We don't take any of them for granted. We have uh, 3,703 examination centers countrywide mm. where we are going to be conducting the examinations. And um, out of the candidature, we have a clear a slightly 50.3% who are males mm. and 497 who are females. Kind of too close to call, but uh, it's good enough, and we are happy about that. Drawing from these statistics, has the number of candidate, candidates increased or decreased? Oh, yes. We've had uh, an, a percentage increase of uh, uh, slightly close to about 7% percentage increase of candidates from last year's candidature. And uh, this is good. We think maybe it's because we, we did not conduct examinations for 2021. So that could, actually, could also explain why we've had some bit of increase. Okay, now that there comes in some unique uh, occurrences. For mm -hmm. example, the situation or the issue of Kassanda and Mubende, which have been put into a lockdown due to the Ebola virus. Mm -hmm. How are you penetrating or managing this situation? Yes, when the news first broke last night, we were like, oh my God, what is happening? Are we mm. going to conduct examinations in Kassanda and in Mubende? But we are grateful for the guidance from the Minister of Health, Ministry of Education, the security personnel, and all the powers that be. The board has had discussions and uh, we've been encouraged and uh, we've been given a go-ahead to conduct examinations in both Kassanda and Movende. And as I speak right now, we have been able to deliver examinations to all the other centers in the country, including Kassanda and Movende. Some people are still in transit uh, trying to, to deliver, but by and large, we've been able to deliver examinations to almost all our centers, the ones that are over the 3,700 centers. And uh, we, are, we, are almost con we are confident by tomorrow, by 9 o'clock, all candidates should be able to sit the examinations. So we've been given a go-ahead to conduct examinations. And uh, we want to encourage all our, uh, our professionals, the invigilators, the scouts, if you, we hope you're already in Cassandra or either in Movende or Cassandra. And in case you're wondering how you're going to get to a station tomorrow, we ask you to get in touch with your area supervisor for further guidance on how you can be able to move. Or alternatively, you can get in touch with the police and they will guide you on how you can be able to move. We have the contact of the DPC, Mr. Wamala, rather the regional police commander, Mr. Wamala. You can get in touch with him on 0757 0757 719965. And then he will guide you on how you can be able to move to your various stations, examination centers. But whatever it takes, we are ready to conduct examinations in Cassandra and Movende and throughout the country. And we are urging all the professionals, anybody who is uh, doing work on behalf of your name, please do move with your letter of introduction, move with your national ID, and observe the SOPs as they've been given to us by the Ministry of Health. Well, just out of curiosity, does mm -hmm. UNEB have, you know, offices within some of these districts where papers go to and then spend a week, or do they always come from the main center to these centers, say, the day before, the day prior to the exams? 
It is a process. It mm. is a long process. But um, what we have, for instance, at UCE level, we have what we call area supervisors. These are head teachers within that, those areas, and they are the ones whom we work with to help us conduct examinations within those areas. So it's kind of like, let's say, if you look at, uh, let's say, like Cassandra, for instance, there's an area supervisor who is one of the head teachers in, the, in that area. So our, our agents, our scouts will go. We have, uh, we have distributors who distribute to the take up to that area. We have a station. Mm. In, uh, we have what you call a, a, a storage station. Mm. This is basically it's usually a position that uh, a police station, but it is our container. We manage it. We have the keys and all that. So people who are going there come from the center, and we have different people who have different types of keys. We have about three people having keys to this storage station. So at any one time, even if someone wanted to leak in a paper, Mm. The three of them would have to agree, which is not possible because one of them is a military police person. Then we have um, somebody from f f from from the center and somebody from police. So they don't like you to agree to open uh, a state, uh, whatever a container before it is time. Well, that sounds well put, but the reason also why I'm actually asking mm -hmm. is because in light of the UNEB Act 2021, is mm -hmm, it? Mm -hmm. Yes, there were a number of uh, amendments there that were put mm -hmm. that really put a spotlight on examinations malpractice. Mm -hmm. Do you mind sharing or enlightening us about some of those? Okay, yeah, I would like, thank you so much. I would like to highlight some of the provisions in the NIP Act 2021, which specifically look at the offenses, especially with regard to malpractice, because this mm. is a very big vice. We have section 25, and this specifically talks about unauthorized possession of an examination paper, material, or information which purports to relate to an examination. Like right now, let's say, it's going to be mathematics paper one tomorrow. Anybody who has, who have, who has possession of a paper, whether it is the correct paper or not, you, as long as it purports to be, to relate to an examination to tomorrow's paper or thereafter, <coughs> you commit an offense and uh, it attracts uh, a, a surcharge of uh, five years imprisonment or 20 million shillings. That is 1,000 current points and the current point is 20,000 shillings. However, facilitating a candidate to possess such content, like let's say by sharing on social media, attracts even a bigger surcharge. You are the, the, if, if convicted, you, will be, you, you have to pay 40 million shillings or 10 years imprisonment or both. Allow me just uh, maybe get this clearly, because is this going to be in possession of a physical copy or even an electronic copy? Because it these days, matter. I might get in possession of a, an electronic copy, which mm -hmm. I forward and forward and forward. You've seen forwarded many times. Mm -hmm. And then you get it. So how are you going to implicate that whole forwarded many times uh, chain? What I'd like to advise anybody out there is, you know, desist from forwarding. Just in case such a, uh, such a paper comes onto your phone and comes into your possession, just to be sure, send it to the, we have a police CID contact that is uh, on 704 3 008. 704 3 008, forward it to that number and you'll be safe. Desist from sharing any paper that purports to be or purports to relate to tomorrow's examination or any time in any of examination papers. Right. Alternatively, we have a NIP to free number on 0800 211077. That's 0800 211077. Zero double seven. Kindly let us know just in case there's anything, or we have a customer care WhatsApp a WhatsApp call number zero seven six zero seven three one two six one. Kindly forward those numbers, but please desist from forwarding anything that uh, that, that purports to relate to an examination that will be regarded as examination malpractice. And we want to warn the candidates out there: do not indulge in any form of malpractice, be it copying or external assistance. Anyone who copies or whoever copies from you. Both of you are culpable, and you mentioned if you, your exams can be cancelled for that. Well, thank you very much. That's Madame Jennifer Kalule Nsamba, the Principal Public Relations Officer of Uganda National Examinations Board. As she has put it, well, please do not involve yourselves in any form of malpractice, or else you will face the consequences. Now, moving on with our news, the Lands Minister Judith Nabakova has also confirmed to the residents of Nabukondo and Kalunguvira in Mitiana district that government is in the final stages of securing them land from landlords who had initially wanted to evict them but later agreed to sell their land to government. Nabakova who has been in Mitiana district on a one day tour also halted the eviction of residents in Butayunga sub-county and these are some of the details. 
in a move aimed at averting rampant land evictions in the country, government has variously offered itself to secure land for squatters and tenants. In Michana district, the communities of Nabukondo are, among others, the beneficiaries of this initiative. <laughs> Following the delays in the implementation of such a pledge, residents had started living in suspense, although government now confirms the process in advanced stages. President Museven said government should buy, but for the vulnerable, for those who cannot afford, for those who have no way out of getting titles. And I believe once he considers this plot 13 to be bought by government, it is a good idea. This was at a meeting by the lands minister and attended by a section of landlords who are willing to sell off their properties to government. The residents called me because they were not certain of the process and that's why I decided to come on ground to ascertain whether what the landlord was saying was the truth. Of course we found that the landlord has titles but again there are a number of issues which need to be ironed out before the process kicks off. It was during this engagement that allegations of conning government on the same land resurfaced. We have seen that there are tenants whom he had engaged and they had started even paying for their land. They had started paying to enable them to get titles and he hasn't delivered on that. And of course even the plots he wanted to sell, they are plots in a different area which I haven't seen and appreciated. And yet this is a town, a town it, is a, it, is, it is a trading centre and we are seeing that the trading centre has more people than the rest of the area. So I'm um, asking him or her to consider if at all they are to sell land to government. They should sell land which is highly incumbent. Mr. Nawako also convened a meeting of residents of Utayunja sub county where tenants are at the auto of eviction. In Songazi Takarino, Fafuna, Okuso Mozewa, Gombolanti, Abatuze, Fivaina, Mumitima, which was the devil wound. There was enough for honorable minister to qualify in the benefiting under Uganda land fund. I want to say, really, never said to me. Although the landlord was in advanced stages of selling off this property, the arrangement has been halted by government. The landlord is saying they are two square miles. The titles given to me are showing 480 acres. So the whole thing is not flowing properly. Let the status quo be maintained as we investigate. And we are going to place a commissioner's caveat, not until we have concluded the investigations into the matter. The minister also directed the landlord to avail land titles to those who had entered an agreement with him earlier. Ever since she assumed this office as minister in charge of lands, Judith Nawakoba has dedicated less scaled down land wrangles in her home district of Michiana, as few cases of evictions are now reported. Robert Nyango, UBC News. Yes, my producer corrected me right there. That area is called Butayunja Sub-County, point of correction. In other news, the State Minister for Lands, Dr. Sam Mayanja, has ordered for the arrest of a one Mike Joseph Maweje for allegedly displacing residents of Mpegwe village in Wakiso district, Kachiri Sub-County. These are some of the details. The two square mile disputed land accommodates 1,000 residents who have been living in fear following claims of displacement by the alleged landowner. This has prompted State Minister for Lands Dr. Sam Mayanja to hold a baraza with the affected residents, giving a directive to arrest one Jackson Chikonyogo and his advisor. <laughs> The complainant Jackson Chikonyogo says the chairperson of Mpegwe village has always connived with police to force them off the land. <laughs> Arias Mosisi, a resident of Mpegwe, gave an account of the contested land. Mosisi 
Minister Mayanja declared Chikonyo Golan title as valid and confirmed Mike Joseph Maweji a trespasser. Maweji was asked to pay for the damages. <laughs> The land in question is said to have been bought in 1923 by Jackson's father and has never secured a loan in any financial institution, Jamil Sekaja compiled this report. UBC News shall return right after these messages with business. Stay tuned. Stay connected on the largest 4G network in Uganda using the Airtel 4G Pocket MiFi at only 75,000 Uganda shillings. It comes with 15 GBs free, valid for a month. You can connect up to 10 of your friends and family at a go. Visit the nearest Airtel shop to get one today or call 0800 330 for free delivery within Kampala. Dial star 175 star 9 hash to activate free 15 GBs. Airtel, the smartphone network. The Electricity Disputes Tribunal is a specialized quasi-judicial body established under Section 93 of the Electricity Act to handle all civil cause disputes relating, but not limited to, regulatory disputes, billing and licensing, tariffs, power generation, transmission and distribution issues, compensation resulting from activities in the electricity sector including civil wrongs and breaches of statutory and contractual duties and consumer-related complaints. The Electricity Disputes Tribunal is a special court and the first instance court that deals with electricity matters in the country. For more information, please contact the Electricity Disputes Tribunal at Amber House, Kampala Road, opposite Post Office or call us on 041-232987. create a good learning environment because a good school equals a better life raising voices did you know that a cashless secure and convenient lifestyle is possible with airtel money pay pay for your goods and services in the following simple steps dial star 185 star 9 hush enter the merchant id enter the amount enter payment reference for example school items please enter pin to confirm you will receive a confirmation message for a successful transaction airtel money instant secure borderless Welcome back, our dear viewer. You're still watching the UBC News Tonight, broadcasting live from Nyala Avenue. We now take you into the world of business. The country director, Sasakawa Africa Association, Dr. Rosalind Nyamutari, has asked farmers to embrace cooperatives as a way of promoting their businesses. Nyamutari says that they have been implementing activities aimed at promoting agro-industrialization across the country. She was speaking to farmers in Lango sub-region. These are the details. This is a business hub for farmers in Abel Sub County, Oyam District, where Sasakawa Africa Association and its partners interacted with smallholder farmers for the Greenfield Day. The Greenfield Day is held every season when the crops are at the vegetative stage of growth to help farmers evaluate themselves as far as agronomic practices are concerned for better yields. Today we are having a Greenfield Day. It's very, very important because it's a day we come to showcase what really science has for us. This is a time when farmers have to they come together and learn practically to see the difference between modern farming technologies and the traditional ones, such that they can appreciate and see and adopt. Today we are here in this function that is organized by Sasakawa Global Africa. It's a, a green field day 
which is which intends to bring farmers from different locations and regions to come and get a feel of how crops are produced in an improved way. And that's why today we are here in this garden. We have uh, farmers from different locations, from different districts, Lira, Kole, Oyam, and from different cooperatives that they're coming to learn the practices that we have within this, within the cooperative premises and within our garden here. The country director of Sasakawa Africa Association called on farmers to embrace cooperatives as a way to promote their businesses. All these cooperative societies are saving and we are telling them save for a reason, save for a purpose. So if there is the quality declared seed at a good price, let them save for that so that when it is harvested they can buy and plant. And we focus them to take farming as a business. When you take farming as a business, you don't wait for anybody to, to guide you. I always tell them, when you are establishing a, a retail shop, for example, do you wait for somebody to give you the capital to start? Soil degradation and lack of enough knowledge in modern agronomic practices are some of the challenges that most farmers face while practicing agriculture, but the Greenfield Day is always an opportunity for farmers to adopt new experiences in their agribusiness. I said as Sasakawa, we are promoting regenerative agriculture, improving the soil fertility, and uh, there are different technologies and practices that, as you have seen, we are planting in lines, we are promoting the organic fertilizer, you saw the, the green world, and all other good practices under that. Farmers have benefited from the Greenfield Day to acquire modern agricultural information and expertise by interacting with the experts, which has helped them to fully participate in the agro industry. Furthermore, in business, poultry and piggery farmers and feed traders are threatening to quit the industry due to the losses they are incurring after government imposed an increment of 28% import duty. During a press conference held in Kampala, the investors appealed to government to reduce the levies on their product. More details in this report. Recently, government introduced 28% tax on poultry feeds to eliminate poor quality feeds on the market. However, this left people in poultry feed unbearable and have appealed to government to reduce the tax. The, the birds, the birds strike. If a, if a bird has not gotten feed for one day, it will strike for, for, for like three weeks. Richard Chirabira, a poultry farmer in Wobulenzi, calls for mediation between government and poultry stakeholders for an amicable solution. We as farmers, we can solve our problems. The only thing the government should do is to work with us. Consult us, ask us where are we doing raw and uh, where we're not doing. He also appealed to government to impose high taxes on imported feeds to allow local producers sell their products competitively. A case in point, chicken brought from South Africa, a broiler chicken brought from South Africa, it is cheaper than the one we produce here in Uganda. Deal with the, 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 the cost, the tax, to try to protect us from the foreign products that are coming in to compete with us. A poultry feeds trader, George William Kayondo says, since government introduced the 28% increments on poultry feeds, many containers are held on borders. Really stuck, eh? even for those that have gotten the little containers, what to do? Even when we were in parliament, still ULA was not clear, was not changing its stand that they, are, they, are, they will not collect. Because you are committing to collect in the future. What are we going to, what should we give our constituents? Then fortunately, when we go to the market, because I told you I sell premium pork products as well, there is no way we can extend it. Kenya is sending here pork. So if mine is very expensive, it means there is an alternative. So are you chasing me away from business? How am I going to survive? Government first imposed 10% tax on poultry feeds 
and later added 18% as a countermeasure against adulterated feeds flooding the market. Brian Tumwinebiaruhanga, Andrew Sebira, UBC News. Well, that brings us to the end of our 8 o'clock edition of the news tonight. However, join us later at 10 p.m. for another bulletin. But allow me to speak something to the poultry farmers. There is a new methodology that is, being, that is using black soldier fly compositing to create feeds for local market. I think that's something that you could be able to adventure in and see how it might be cheaper or I don't know, but something worth checking out. See you at 10. BC inspiring Uganda Parish Development Model is a development approach conceived under the Third Development Plan, NDP3, and prescribed by the NRA Manifesto 2021-2026 with a goal of moving 3.5 million households from the subsistence to a monetized economy. With a fund size of 1.5 trillion Ugandan shillings, the Parish Development Model aims to deepen the decentralization process, improve household incomes, enable inclusive, sustainable, balanced and equitable socio-economic transformation. Under the initiative, each parish will get 17 million shillings in the current financial year to start the implementation of the program. And according to the plan, the parishes will each receive 100 million shillings with effect from the next financial year. The launch of the Parish Development Model operationalized parish savings and credit cooperative societies or circles through which people will be able to obtain financing for development. Under the Parish Development Model, the parish is going to be the vehicle for data gathering, area-based enterprise selection and development, co